All right, students, welcome to the notes on chemical equations. We're gonna go ahead and talk about chemical equations, and while I do, here's the essential question. Don't forget you can pause this video at any moment to take some moment to write down what's written on the screen. You're also welcome and encouraged to scrub backwards or rewind if you need to go back and review a concept one more time and listen to it again. Let's start. How do I write a chemical equation and what mistakes should I avoid? This should be in the header of your paper. What is a chemical equation? Well, a chemical equation is just an equation that represents a reaction. It's similar to a math equation, but besides just using numbers, and there will be numbers involved, it's also going to be using chemical formulas. So let's take a look at this equation here. We're going to go and look at each of its parts. I really recommend writing this equation and labeling it like I'm going to do right now. Let's start with this arrow right here. This represents the reaction arrow. That represents where our chemical reaction is going to happen. In the beginning of the reaction, all the stuff to the left of the arrow represent these things called reactants. Now, reactants are just the starting substances, the substances that are going to be mixed together that are going to cause the reaction. On the right-hand arrow, we get these things called products. These are what result after the reaction ends up. They're usually, they are a rearrangement of the reactants. So the reactants make the products. And the products may be one like it is right here, which is water. Or we could get two or more products. We can have a lot of different products. Now, you'll notice that there are numbers up in front of each of these molecules. These represent coefficient, and it just represents the amount, either in the number of molecules or moles of a substance. So here in this equation, we can say we have two hydrogen molecules. That's two sets of H2 and one oxygen molecule. That's one set of O2. Now, we'll talk about coefficients in the next module where we talk about the law of conservation of mass, but I do want you to know that they're called coefficients right now, and you're going to see them every once in a while. Now, note that they all could also could just represent moles. This is two moles of hydrogen because moles is just the SI unit or the standard unit of a quantity. Phase symbols. Phase symbols represent what state or phase the substance is in. Now, we know solid is S, liquid is L, and gas is G. Those are common phases, but we can also see AQ. Aqueous is a special phase in chemical uh, equations. That just means aqueous. A lot of times when we do reactions, we have to dissolve our substance in water in order to get it to react. That's why they've de designated a special phase, phase symbol called AQ or aqueous. All right, so what exactly do we want to be able to do? Here's a good practice of what our next step is. We need to be able to write chemical reactions based on basically word equations or experiences that we have in a lab. So let's practice. We're going to write the chemical reaction for this scenario. Carbon reacts with water to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. Well, we can write this as a word equation. So word equations are just taking all of the different formats of the paraphrase of the sentences up there, and we're just pulling out the important parts. Carbon plus water. So those are the things that react together. They produce, here's our arrow, carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas. So there are reactants, carbon and water, and our products are carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. So it's really useful to be able to write and to simplify this wordy word problem into a word equation. There's also something called a formula equation, and this is ultimately the goal we're trying to get to. We're going to take that word equation and we're going to rewrite the formulas for each thing. Carbon is C. Water is H2O. Our reaction arrow is there. Carbon monoxide is CO and hydrogen gas is H2. Now I'll talk about this H2 if you're confused about it. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but a hint is that this is a diatomic molecule. So this is the ultimate goal, what we're trying to do. Notice I don't have any coefficients here. We'll talk about coefficients a little bit later. The big warning, you need to know how to write ionic and covalent compound formulas. We've learned this in a previous unit, and if you didn't do so well on it, really try to get good at it because you need to know how to do it now. So we're going to take a little bit of a moment, a side quest, and practice that. Here's kind of the summed up components of ionic versus covalent. Remember, ionic bonds are metals and nonmetals together. That's how we know we're dealing with an ionic bond. Once we know it's an ionic bond, we know that ionic means charge characteristics, so we have to follow that rule of zero charge. Each substance in the ionic compound must come together in a ratio where they cancel each other out charge-wise. Now, ionic compounds do not have prefixes in their name, so when we name them, or look at the name, there are no prefixes to tell us how much they are. We have to base it on charge. 
Covalent, on the other hand, is a little bit different. They're two nonmetals. Covalent means sharing the valence electrons. So they do not depend on charge because they're not giving and taking electrons. So do not try to use charge when coming together with covalent compounds. The way we know how many covalent compounds or covalent items are in the compound, we use the prefix, mono, di, tri, tetra. Those let us know how many there are. So let's give you some examples. So we need to be able to go from a name to a formula. So the first question we're going to ask for all of these are, are they ionic or covalent? Magnesium bromide. Magnesium is an, a metal. That's a dead giveaway that that's an ionic compound. Carbon dinitride. That's covalent. Now, besides it saying di there in the name, more importantly, these are two nonmetals. Zinc one oxide is ionic. Lithium sulfate is also ionic. Diphosphorus, tetrachloride, those are covalent. And again, the biggest difference, metals and nonmetals versus all nonmetals. That's how we tell the difference. Okay, now that we know whether they're ionic or covalent, we can now write the formula. So magnesium bromide is ionic. It deals with charge, so I need to know the charges. Magnesium is positive 2, bromine is minus 1. I just looked at the periodic table and found that out because I know how valence electrons work and charge works. So therefore, the ratio is 1 mg to 2 Br, so it's MgBr2. This is magnesium bromide. Carbon dinitride, that's covalent. I do not need to worry about charge. I'm going to use the prefixes to help write the formula. So one carbon, two nitrogens. Zinc one oxide is ionic. I have to worry about charge. I see here a transition metal. That doesn't tell me the charge on the periodic table, but it does here in the name that one, that Roman numerals, represents the charge of zinc. So charge plus one zinc minus two oxygen. Therefore, I have to do Zn2O. Lithium sulfate. This is ionic. I have to worry about charge. Another, here, another thing here is sulfate. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion. The ending eight kind of gave that away. So plus one charge from lithium minus two charge from the sulfate. Therefore, it's Li2SO4 because I need two lithiums to cancel out that sulfate. Last one, covalent, diphosphorus tetrachloride. That's two phosphorus, four chlorines. No charge. Don't need to worry about it. We need to go the other way as well. What if we're given a formula and we need to find a name? LiBr. That's ionic. Lithium's a metal. It's an alkali metal. N2O4, all of those are covalent. Al2SO4, well, aluminum's a metal, so it has to be ionic. C5O10, that's covalent. And FeO, that's ionic. Iron is a metal. So when we write the, the names, ionics are super easy. Just write them as you see them. There are no prefix. So it's going to be lithium, and we're going to change the ending to ide with bromide. N2O4, this is a little bit more challenging. I have to use those prefix. So di-nitrogen, there's two nitrogens and four oxygens. Al2SO4, that's aluminum sulfate. Remember, SO4 is a polyatomic ion, so I'm going to name it as I see it on the periodic table. Covalent, pentacarbon decaoxide, C5O10. I've got to use those prefixes. This is the hard one, ionic, iron. Iron is a transition metal, and I need to remember that transition metals have variable charges, so I have to designate the charge using Roman numerals here. Here the charge is 2 because oxygen is a minus 2, therefore iron has to be a plus 2. Acids. You're going to see acids in formulas, and we haven't talked about acids. So for now, just quite simply, use the acids on the back of your periodic table. There's a list. So if you ever see an acid, here are all the acids on the periodic table. You might want to pull it out and find this list. Warning number two, watch out for diatomic molecules. Remember, there are special seven molecules or special atoms or elements that can never be alone. They should be written like this. So hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Iodine. These are diatomic, but remember, that only happens when they are alone in a chemical reaction. So for example, and we saw this reaction before, hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to form water. Well, it just says hydrogen gas. That's pure elemental hydrogen. That's diatomic, so I'm going to write H2. Oxygen gas is pure elemental form of oxygen, so I'm going to write O2. But water is not the pure forms of hydrogen or oxygen, so this is not diatomic. Even though this 2 is here, that doesn't mean that this hydrogen is diatomic. That's just the ratio they need to go as a covalent compound. All right, go ahead now and go and try to do the practice problems following these rules. Just so you know, I do have some example problem videos that you can follow along if you need to. If you need some help, I'll go over a few problems. Good luck, guys.